today we have a beautiful weather in Chengdu, China, and I'm also quite excited because I'm about to have my first ever Mission Star restaurant meal in China. I'm currently at Tai Ku Li. This is the commercial center of Chengdu right now. This is where the local people go to shopping, spend their time, spend their weekends, do some social activities. Let's go. I'm a bit hungry. Looks like we found the place, Michelin One Star. Now I have arrived at the restaurant. This place is called Mi Xun. It's a tea house. It's situated inside this fancy, we call this like Si He Yuan type of architecture, converted from an old style mansion. So it has like this really serene vibe, really cool. I'm in this courtyard, and this restaurant serves vegetarian food. The set menu we have here is about 300 RMB per person. It's about 50 US dollars. This is the farm to table Michelin tasting menu, and there's also a vegetarian menu in the form of a book. But today I'm just gonna try the tasting menu. It's gonna include some of the most, uh, I guess, iconic dishes that they have here. All right, so first here we have the tea. Mm, there's osmanthus in it. The tea. I'm not a tea expert, so I don't know what to say, but. <laughs> It's slightly sweet, slightly floral. There's orchard in it. Okay, here we have two quick bite-sized snacks. I'm use bush, if you will. This is matcha. It's like a matcha infused with gao hazelnut with red bean paste in it. Mm. Slightly sweet, slightly nutty. Now we have a platter of three dishes. This is baby watermelon. This is chestnut with ginger shreds. And this is algae flour with mustard and soy sauce. This is a special flour growing in the lake of Yunnan. It is suggested that I start with this, then this, then the chestnut. Baby watermelon first. By the way, I look mad reddish because of the lantern. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste like watermelon at all. It's more like a pickle, crisp, slightly acidic. Looks quite cute though. Really, really crunchy. I think the texture is more akin to a crunchier version of cucumber instead of watermelon, but the pattern, the color does look like it. Next one, algae flower. This one kind of looks like okra sliced from the middle. Also crunchy. There's a slight chili oil, slight soy sauce. Also refreshing. Chestnut with ginger shreds. This is just chestnut. Nothing special though. With a hint of, again, soy sauce. A little bit dry ginger. Okay, that's interesting. Slightly sweet and gingery with a light sweet soy glaze. I feel mad than right now, not gonna lie. Okay, so next one we have a soup here. This is Songrong Bai He Dun Zhong, Yunnan Fresh Matsutake and Lily Soup. Mm, okay, I can smell a light fragrance from the Matsutake. There is goji berry. Oh, that's hot. It is piping hot. You have a slight fragrance of the masuhake and the goji berry. The soup is kind of simple though. The broth is very clear as it should be because it's vegetarian. But I don't taste a whole lot of umami in it. I mean, usually for masuhake, I expect more umami in it. This one is a, uh, well, it's a hot soup. Next one, this is wax gore and tapioca with yellow mushroom sauce. So here we have three wax gore and uh, this is the tapioca with some vegetable in it. And this is also a squash soup. Mm. Oh, this is good. This is a Chinese technique we call gou tian. So basically cornstarch with water and mixing whatever you're cooking. In this case, this is the soup. Mm. You got a delicate sweetness and a little bit of umami flavor in it. Let's try one of the gourd. All right, let's try this wax gourd. This score is called Donggua Winter Melon, but it's translated as wax score. And the tapioca at the top is almost a little bit of mushy texture, like a vegan cake. With vegetable flavor and a little bit of soy. Look at this. This is just reflection from the lantern, but it kind of looks like a wallpaper, and I like it. Moving on, here is my second hot dish, braised mapo tofu with wild mushroom sauce. And this, it's a mixture of red rice and roasted Canadian black rice. Wild mushroom here. This one here in particular is called Ji Zhong Jun. There are so many different wild mushrooms in Chinese cuisine and they don't even have English names. So the menu just like generalize it into wild mushroom, but they're like a really different species with different flavor profile. And this one is Ji Zhong Jun. Uh, I'll probably put up a Latin taxonomy description here. Mm. 
First off, this isn't what traditional Sichuan mapo tofu tastes like. The traditional authentic one is supposed to be more spicy and more numbing. You're supposed to have like the numbing sensation on your lips. This one is basically a way more reduced version. But flavor-wise, it's a good dish, although it doesn't have that numbing and spicy sensation. What it lacks in that aspect, it makes up in its umami and earthiness with the mushroom. The tofu is also tender, got good flavor. By not having numbing and spicy, I don't mean that it doesn't have any spice at all. It still has a heat to it, you know, a little bit spicy, but it's just not as strong as the authentic version that's supposed to come in a stone pot so it's gonna be like bubbling piping hot but this obviously isn't that version this is more like a zen version of it it's a good dish but i can see this in a lot of other restaurants as well okay so let's have a little bit of a rice with this mm, okay that is a nutrition texture this canadian black rice it's like the crispy wild rice that you find in a lot of other new american restaurants I do like that. There's a texture variation, crunchy and has a slight pop in your mouth. The red rice flavor, it's not gonna be too much different from white rice. It's gonna be like a bit more sweet, a bit more nutty. Red rice is used everywhere in Bhutanese cuisine, but not in Chinese cuisine. I do like this mixture. This wild mushroom does have that unique flavor and like really umami, a little earthy. Okay, so moving on, we have this carb spinach dandan noodle with two different types of sauce. This is mushroom chili oil and this is sesame paste. And on top, we have a little bit of a ya tai and this is nuts. Well, first glance, if you're a native from Chengdu, you'd be like, this is not authentic. But by this point, you should probably understand authenticity is not really what this restaurant is striving for actually the construction is authentic it's just like the representation isn't pretty much the only differences between a traditional dan dan noodle and the sujiang noodle we had earlier is uh this one has addition of ya tai which we do have and also the noodle representation is like a pasta style some people might be like ah this one looks like i don't know like not chinese french italian <laughs> The noodle is good. It has good strength. The sauce compared to the one on the street, this one is reduced despite I have had a good amount of it. I can see why some people will hate it because they can have an authentic version on the street for like one to two US dollar and it's gonna taste more authentic and has stronger flavor. This one you're in like a fancy restaurant paying way more but eating this reduced version and they'd be like, hey, what is this? But at least here, you can refill the noodle. Another brand new refill of this spinach dandan noodle. New plate, new noodle, new sauce, new everything. I'm gonna keep doing this until I get full. One thing at least for sure is that you won't be hungry by the end of this meal. You know what, at this point, I really wanna do a street food style. I, I wanna just like pour all the sauce in like, and mix it. Mm. At least the noodle itself was good. This is the third plate, my second refill. I think this is gonna be my last plate. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I keep adding more. This time, I'm gonna do it the savage way. I don't think there's anyone watching, right? I'm just going to... Also, this... Again, this is the mushroom chill oil, so it's actually like mushroom soup at the bottom and a thin layer of oil on top. So this is like more liquidy instead of a chill oil sauce. So I guess I'm gonna drink this one. Mm. Because of the chili oil slash soup, this mixture is a bit soupy. I'm full. Finally, dessert time, we have walnut and oat milk pudding. This one almost looks like a cream type of thing. Mmm, oh, this is good. A little sweet, a little nutty, a little creamy. Walnut and oat milk both flavor nicely coming through. And there's some small fruit in there with a little bit like sweet and fruity pop. Mmm, I like this. There are also different texture in there. That mint also provided some additional flavor. I can see this belong to the very good category by Chinese standards because it's not too sweet. All right, so I have just finished my meal. I am full. The food is good, but to be honest, I don't think it's a Michelin star good. 
I'm trying to think of what this restaurant's clientele is. The local people is definitely not the clientele. As you can see, the food served here are the vegetarian counterparts of their meaty version, and oftentimes not as strong or fragrant in terms of the flavor profile. For the local people here, you can just have the authentic version for a way cheaper price and be happier. Here, they're gonna be like, okay, I spent this much more money for what? For like a vegetarian version that's at its best as good, but oftentimes maybe less by their standard. I am not a vegetarian by any means, but that doesn't mean I don't eat vegetarian food. In fact, some of the best foods I have ever eaten are vegetarian. I am completely fine with that concept, but you have to impress me with the appropriate technique and execution. This one here, I just feel like it's just more of like traditional Chinese cooking, but substitute ingredient with vegetarian. It's lacking something here. You either need to have top-notch ingredients or have really like umami flavor, you know, with like different fermentations, different techniques, or you have some kind of innovation and fuse things together. I am really looking for more refined execution or some kind of innovation, but it's just not there. But I have to add that the environment here is really nice and it's not that expensive by even the Chinese standard here. I mean, 300 RMB, that's some price, but like just to experience it once, to see the environment, that is cool. But if you're a traveler, like not from China and you wanna collect a star, you're looking at like $50 for a Michelin star. If you do the two person fixed menu, then you're looking at like 40 US dollar for a star. That's value for adding a Michelin star to your roaster. Anyways, that wraps up the meal and I will continue my culinary journey in Chengdu. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Ciao!